The question regularly arises. Who is the most important person on the court? Which position is unconditionally the number one of the volleyball lineup? Without which player will your chances of winning rapidly move to nothing? As for me, this question should not arise and everything is obvious here. But I would also like to know your opinion. Which position do you consider the most important on the court? Write about it in the comments. And it is desirable to argue your point of view. Have you written? Damn, it's a strange question because I left my answer in the title of this video. Well, okay, as you probably already guessed, we will talk about setter. But we will talk not just about how to learn how to do a set well, but also how to be an excellent setter in general. To be an absolutely irreplaceable person on the court. Phew, the video promises to be interesting, so as usual, we will not delay any longer. Let's go! I myself have been thinking for a long time about retraining as a setter, but I understand that it will not be possible to achieve significant progress without regular training practice, because you should not count on any adequate development during regular game training, and especially if you plan to develop as a setter. You can maintain your shape, but first you need to dial it, right? And so, what does the most important person on the court do? Of course, the main function of the setter is to supply spikers with convenient sets, because a good setter can make a good attacker out of an average spiker, but a bad setter can bury even the strongest attacking player. The quality of the team's block also depends on the setter, because in its position it often meets the opponent's outsides, through which most of the balls usually pass in attack and especially at the amateur level. Because opposites are not present in every team. Yes, even if they are present, not every setter can give a good back set, but this is not about that. And finally, what many people forget about. Setters are obliged to defend well. It's better to let the team remain without a perfect set than immediately lose the ball due to poor or no defense at all. Also, of course, attack and serve should be present in the arsenal of setters, but I don't think it's worth talking about serve separately, but we'll talk a little bit about the attack. So let's start with perhaps the most basic setter function, namely set, which is what we will talk about now. Let's first analyze what the correct release of the ball looks like. Ideally, you should use all 10 fingers during the set. The main tools of the setter are the thumbs and forefingers, which you have to connect into something similar to a triangle and a heart. Thanks to these fingers, the strength of your sets is set, and all other fingers serve for better control of the ball, respectively lead to a more accurate set. It is extremely difficult to use all 10 fingers, but it is still necessary to learn this skill. There are a lot of auxiliary exercises for development a similar skill. Here is one of the simplest options, which will only require a ball and some free time. I think that many people know about this exercise, but do not pay enough attention to it. You can practice without even getting out of bed. If you regularly perform this exercise, you can significantly improve the quality of ball handling. Respectively, you will be able to give softer and more accurate sets. I recommend doing 2 to 3000 repetitions a day, but I do not advise you to do 3000 at once. Start first with 3 or 500 repetitions. And of course, it is not necessary to perform all this amount in one approach. I prefer to do 100 or 200 repetitions at a time. There is also another useful exercise that also does not require much effort from you. You need to take the ball and tap it with your fingers in pairs. Perform 10 to 15 repetitions and move on to the next pair. As soon as you get to the little finger, start working backwards. It is very important to use only your fingers, not to help yourself with your hands and to exclude the work of the wrists. Then you start using two pairs of fingers in the same style. If you start to do well, you can close your eyes to be on the same wave with the ball. And the more often you practice, the softer your handling will be, because a good setter always has very soft hands if you know what it means. Even after the warm-up, it immediately becomes clear who the opponent will have a set. Unless, of course, the setter is not completely wooden. Although, it is difficult to name such people and setter as well. If you have space, you can use the wall. And accordingly, do not forget about the back set. With the improvement of the skill, you can periodically work with one hand, at least with the right, so that you can give the set from the pass close to the net. Start with the usual sketch and just try to catch the ball. And then try to do this exercise without a pause. Well, also you can use the wall if you have such an opportunity. 
so that you understand there are not 100% specific exercises, but only some exercises that will significantly improve your ball control. This will help you be more confident in your main workouts, which I hope are available. Many people often advise using the legs to the maximum during the set. But most good setters try to do a set in a jump to minimize the arc and increase the speed of sets accordingly. Plus, it also takes the attention of one blocker when the setter is on the front line. And if you are sets in a jump, then you need to have very strong hands, especially forearms, to throw the ball to the desired point at the expense of the wrists, thereby demoralizing the opponent's block. So, due to the set's technique, there is no way to succeed here and additional development tools are needed, which I will tell you about in a separate video. So, if you want a video with exercises to increase the strength of the sets and at the same time set control, then you will need 200 likes under this video. And as soon as they are typed, the corresponding video will be released. I hope you will succeed. If you compare professional setters and a larger mass of amateurs, you can easily see the difference in the trajectory of the set of these types of players. Although it seems that it is not easy. Often many people do not see the difference. If you don't see the difference, then let me explain. I'll take just a couple attacks and analyze them by example. Amateurs usually get a more suspended set, that is, it has a fairly stable trajectory. As a rule, it is usually more convenient for attackers, especially low-level ones, or for those guys who have problems with timing. Here you know exactly where you will contact the ball, because everything goes in a stable arc, without any surprises. But for a professional set, the ball flies almost in a straight line, except for some emergency situations, when it is completely inconvenient to do a set, and you just need to at least knock the ball into the right zone. That is, the attacker does not have to wait until the ball reaches him, but he can hit it a little earlier or a little later, which will significantly complicate the work of the opponent's blockers. Because they may not guess the timing of the jump, or they may make a mistake with the choice of position. That is, ideally, such a set should fly in a straight line almost to the antenna itself, and then fall sharply, as often happens with float serve, when the ball falls down like a stone, abruptly changing its trajectory. But this will require strong wrists and a huge amount of practice. But when you reach a high level, sometimes there may even be a hovering effect of the ball. In this case, the ball will stop for a moment before falling and it will be easier for the attacker to handle it. I hope I explained everything clearly here. To summarize briefly and roughly, we need to remove the candles and start the set straight. Yes, maybe your teammates will complain about such sets for the first time because they are more used to playing slow balls, but try not to pay attention because when they get used to it, they will understand that with such a set, they will be able to attack more variably and they will be able to use their attacking potential to the maximum. Since we have figured out what a high quality set should look like and how it can be done, let's move on to the next stage of the evolution of setter, namely entering the position. No matter how well you interact with the ball, if you don't know how to be in the right place and right time, your efficiency will plummet. What is a standard entry to a position? During the opponent's serve, you need to get to the net as quickly as possible. As a rule, this position is located between the third and second zone, what gives you a timely arrival under the ball. Let's start with the most banal. It simplifies the handling of the ball and the further execution of the set. Going out to net, you calmly assess the trajectory of the ball and without too much fuss, you can send it in the direction you need. Also, a good arrival under the ball provides us with good control on the court and net. That is, you can track the initial actions of the blockers on the other side of the court, and thus you can choose a more convenient option for your attackers. Well, you also have better control over your attackers. According to their position and approach, you can easily adjust the height, width and speed of the set. And do not forget that the ball should be practically on your head, so that you can make a set in any direction, while not revealing your actions to the opponent block. And without a high quality arrival under the ball, it is extremely difficult to achieve this. You also need to remember that you should set sideways to the net and not with your back or face. So don't be lazy and move your legs. It seems that we have talked about all the basic points regarding the main function of the setter. Let's now move on to the secondary, but nevertheless, very important skills that distinguish a cool setter from a regular thrower. <laughs> 
the block will be the first in this list. There will be no specific maneuvers on the block or any secret tactics for you to stop the opponent's attackers. As for me, setter and opposite have the most important role when blocking at the amateur level because, as I said earlier, more opponent attacks pass through them. Here I wanted to talk more about the short guys with a low jump, which are usually setters at the amateur level. Yes, of course you could say, train your jump. But in reality, not everyone has the opportunity to develop this skill or simply does not have the desire. Here they can also be understood. But at the same time, he still needs to jump on the block and try to be as effective as possible in this component. What should a setter do with a low block in order to be as useful as possible for his team? The worst solution in a situation when the ball is flying into your zone will be an attempt to throw off your hands. You already have not the most dangerous block and if you tilt your hands, it will become not only harmless but rather even dangerous for your team. Because even if you get hit, the ball will either go out of bounds or fall under your net. So a low setter should always put his hands straight in order to somehow increase the height of the block or rather not lose it. Also forget about carrying with your hands or dropping your wrists. The best option in your case would be to leave your arms straight in order to also gain additional centimeters in the height of your defensive structure. And if you hardly jump to the net, then you can point your wrists up to try to soften the opponent's attack. We increase the height of the block by all means, reducing the number of cleanly broken balls through you. I think that everything is clear here. Also, do not forget that you have a middle blocker in your team. If you cannot help on the block, then he will most likely be able to. So create all the conditions so that he can comfortably fit in with you and then if the opponent's attacker does not get a spike in the best way, then the central one will be able to slow him down. So try to avoid unnecessary movements and try to be at the place of setting your block in a timely manner and not try to guess. Because if you think for a long time, then you will not block anything yourself and you will also interfere with the central one. And finally, we'll talk about the element that a high-class setter simply has to have, namely defense. If there is a defensive setter in the team, then this is a real treasure. Again, here I will not analyze any technical points, I just want to convey to you one single thought. If you are on the backline, then first of all you have to make a defense, and only then think about how you get into position and give a set. Because if the ball flies into your zone and you immediately go to the net, then the opponent will get an easy point. It is better to give the set to some other member of your team after your defense, rather than you just run away and give this ball to the opponents. Often there are situations when the opponent will not have a full-fledged attack, but there is a simple tip or just a roll. Then in this case you can safely start moving to the net in advance. But for this you need to indicate with your voice that you are moving forward. Then the player who is defending in the second zone will be able to pull back to your position and calmly bring the ball. First the defense and then the run to the net. Do not forget. Yes, I almost forgot. It is necessary to mention about such an event scenario as a tip or a setter attack. If you have attackers, why do you need such maneuvers? I'll explain. If you have reached the position in time, then you should have good control over what is happening on the other side of the net. And in that case, if you see that the opponent's block does not rise with you, then you can freely make a tip, so that in the future they will jump with you and it will be easier for your spikers to attack. But in order to successfully attack and tip, you must definitely practice attacking actions with your left hand, because your right shoulder is near the net. It will not be very convenient to make attacks. And plus, these maneuvers will be easy enough to solve, unlike if you tip and hit with your left hand. So expand your arsenal and terrify your rivals. That's actually all I wanted to share with you today. If this information seemed useful to you, then be sure to click the like button. Therefore, if you gain 500 likes, then a new video about how to increase the strength of your hands for a faster and longer set will be released. Well, Nick was with you as usual. Love what you do and you will definitely succeed. See you soon. Bye.